If you look at uh, ERP project life cycle, uh, I've been a system integrator myself for about uh, uh, 14 years before actually uh, starting up uh, this consulting firm. Uh, as a system integrator, when, when a customer looks for ERP, as a sales guy, when I started the, my career, without knowing what a customer wants, I immediately open my uh, laptop, try to show the presentation, as much time I can take from the customer, kept on repeating whatever I can, and then if I have a sniff of who is going to be the competitor, without again understanding what value of that competitor is giving, I kept on telling why you should not look at that particular uh, competitor. And the first thing I want to do is give a proposal. Once you give a proposal, then keep calling the customers and what is the status of the proposal. This is typically how I have uh, spent my uh, initial uh, days of sales and then keep wondering why end of the day, even though I have done 50 proposals in the last 3 months, I have not proved even 1 or 2. That's where the psych of the mind of the customer becomes very critical. But today I am actually sitting in the other side of the table and trying to help customers in terms of how to go about evaluating ERPs. Most of the times, uh, if you look at all these things what we are putting over here, it is not definitely not academic, it is not theory, and two, it is not rocket science. Definitely, uh, it is not something others cannot do. It is actually common sense. But as we all know, the most uncommon or most difficult thing to get in life is common sense, right? So if you look at it here, any project initiative before we take, we clearly build a business case. And what do we mean by business case? We actually do couple of audits in terms of readiness, in terms of IT infrastructure. Now when we say readiness, we will discuss that uh, in the subsequent slide. Basically, in a, in a simple way, readiness is as an organization who is evaluating or who is looking for an ERP initiative, are they really ready to actually take the ERP into their organization? And IT infra is nothing but specific to that particular project, are they really ready or what is, what is it they need to do with respect to IT infra to do it? I know at least uh, a few of us here uh, who have done this evaluation, gone with the ERP uh, implementations, could have always uh, come out with something called hidden cost. Have you gone? Have you come across this hidden cost anywhere here? Can anybody just raise their hand? I am not going to ask uh, to share that. But anybody who has gone through this hidden cost in the ERP project life cycle? Anybody? Thanks. I think I have one person who has said yes. So what we are trying to do here is something called total cost of ownership. And when we say total cost of ownership, again in a, in a typical uh, mid-size organizations, what they take into consideration is only the ERP software license and the implementation. They actually do a lot of hard negotiation with the license, the principals, the implementation partner, but they don't realize that whatever best deal they get out of it, the end of the day actually could be only one portion of the total cost of what they go to income. So we actually have uh, given a snapshot there which we will cover. Please note, when we talk about these things, even before ideally we should look at a product, we should have done all these exercises. Blueprint. Again, when we look at blueprint, uh, a lot of organizations actually take this stage uh, to do business process re-engineering in their organization. Say I have dealt with uh, organizations who are like uh, 50 crores built over a period of say 10 years, now they want to become 500 crores in the next 3 years and they look at ERP as a real tool to enable them to do that. But then the mistake what they do is they start the ERP project and they expect the system integrator who has come in to do the package implementation to actually do the PPI. So in the process, I have got a live example of my own customer. Uh, he's an engineering contracting company in Chennai, about 100 crores. 
and they want to become 500 crore in about uh, 3 years. They started the project, the project came out about 5 months, 5 calendar months to complete the implementation. Uh, it was not Oracle, some other product. Uh, the, they started the BPR along with the study. The, the study period was supposed to be 1 month to implement the product. It's been 2 years. The customer has gone live only uh, the 25th month of the start of the project. Because you are trying to do a BPR when the ERP implementation has started. It's absolutely the other way around. We should have, uh, when I say this, uh, please know whichever product we pick when we do an implementation, there has to be a, a study or mapping of our business requirement to that product. I am not referring to that. I am referring to the key requirements of the organization for which we are actually going for an ERP. The other key factor is request for proposal. We do it, whatever we are putting over here, I am sure people who do the evaluations, they do it. Only thing is they don't do it in a very structured way. And because we are not doing it in a structured way, we miss certain buses there. Then comes the selection. Meaning, we actually need to do the first two business case and the blueprint before we even look at a product or an implementation partner to be evaluated. But unfortunately, the cycle is reversed. When, when we say we want to evaluate ERP, the first thing we do is we call a partner, show the product. Then we try to see our requirement with the product. And every product has got functionalities. Whether you talk about Oracle or you talk about any other product, every product will have its own functionalities and every product may not have certain functionalities. So every vendor will try to showcase what they have. And if we are trying to see the solution or our requirement to that, that's going to be really a, a wrong route to take for the success of the project. So once the selection is done, we have something called program management. Meaning, once the contract is in place, we talk about the project planning, orientation, another key factor, whichever project team at the client side we define. A lot of times they wouldn't have done multiple ERP engagements, maybe the business they are doing for the first time. So, there has to be orientation done in terms of what challenges they will face. Because in a big market, uh, unlike an enterprise, where people go for a big bank, a group of people from business, they are taken out, they are kept it separately for this project, till the project is over, they are going, going to do only that. But in a big market, let us face it, People are in the business, they have to continue their operations, they have to complete the ERP implementation as well. Am I right in saying this? Do we have a scenario in the mid market where the entire team is only doing ERP projects or we are doing both? Some response please. Yes or no? I'll wait. I don't mind having negative feedback but I need feedback. Motivation is like water. If you don't have it, we can move on. That's why actually uh, when we started, uh, when I started the, my career in uh, fire extinguishers, I used to sell. So we are supposed to do presentations. Actually, if you, there will be nobody. There will be a tape which is kept. Once in five minutes or ten minutes, it doesn't matter what it are, there will be some reaction. The, the psychology is, unless you have some response, your quality of presentation will not be good. So I need some response for me to speed up or slow down. I'll wait. I forgot the question, sir. Can you I'm happy with the response. Thanks. The question is, in a mid-market scenario, do we have people who are dedicated only for the project and they don't do operations? Or most of the time we do operations and then manage the ERP project. It's both. Whereas if you look at the implementation partner, normally the team which is coming for implementation, they are dedicated only for the project. Am I right? So we are starting off actually on a different mode where you have an implementation partner who is 100% or I think 90% dedicated and you have a customer who is actually going to spend only 40 or 50 percent of the bandwidth for the project. These are the clear challenges which needs to be highlighted and accepted by the business from the customer side. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, 
uh, I am a little consultant today, so I can say this. When a project fails, predominantly, I don't want to say blame, but the share is taken more on the system integrator or on the product. But actually, if you dig deep, there are also customers who are part of it. And uh, if you look at today, we have about 22 customers in the last five years, out of which 78% of our customers are the implementations. So that clearly shows that there are a lot of things as a customer they actually can do. That's what we're going to highlight over here.